thank you, Diane, for the uh, for the introduction. And um, it, it's it's great to see you know further uh, involvement as we grow the foundation and grow the community. Um, Axiomatics, uh, as some of you might know, is uh, a company that was. Uh, in essence, spun out of the foundation to help facilitate what's happening in the community around ITB2 and Transmart and other key open source elements. And I'm happy to sort of give you an update. Uh, assuming I can click on that. There we go. So, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll project or I'll use the microphone. So uh, the, the key thing that we focused on in Axiomatics, our vision is an open source vision. We think that open source is the future of software. Uh, and we in particular think open source is the future of scientific software uh, and, and in the, the science and uh, biomedical spaces. And from that perspective, we're focused on, on building out an open source ecosystem and a vision around that, including uh, the space around I2B2 and Transmart. Um, and then building uh, a sustainability around these kinds of platforms. One of the key challenges in open source, uh, as we know, is that we have a lot of projects that start up. They have a period of grant funding, and then often the grant funding ends, and we don't have good sustainability models. And what we're trying to do is build around some of these key platforms, a community-driven sustainability model uh, around open source. And the thing that we want everyone to understand about our view of open source is that open source is, is a lot about a lot more than code. It's about community. And how do we bring people together around technology, around capabilities uh, to make things work? And it's about building an open source culture uh, overall. And I think what we see here in, in this group is, you know, I think we had a, a lot of um, scientists, we have engineers, we have physicians, uh, we have IT people. Um, and it's about building community amongst our various members. So what we're focused on uh, is working within the community to help facilitate open uh, collaboration. And one of the key things uh, that we focus on is how do we incentivize collaboration? Uh, as we started Axiomatics, we first initially worked on developing uh, solutions using open source platforms and working with developers. And what we found is that when we're trying to implement a solution in this space, we need lots of different kinds of expertise around the table. Um, you don't just need someone who can write software, you need data scientists, you need engineers, you need DevOps people, you need statisticians, uh, you need uh, end users. And so one of the key challenges here is how we find the right incentives to incentivize uh, up and down the value chain. When we think of open source software, we're thinking about developers writing code, they're creating value. Uh, and then uh, we're using, as we're using that code, we're implementing solutions on that code. We're realizing and capturing some of that value. And as we, as scientists and physicians, you know, make uh, analysis, publish results, uh, for impact patients' lives, we're actually realizing that key value. So what we're focused on is how can we make that value translation work more effectively in an ecosystem? So for us, um, as I said, we started out at Axiomatics focused on initial solutions. Um, how do we take and, and build solutions for end users and customers from that perspective? Um, but what we've realized is that we need to take uh, what we have as open source platforms, standardize those, make it into usable uh, commercial quality software, implement uh, support systems, et cetera. And what we've, we've start taking our model to being with Axiomatics today is what I would call an open source publi publishing house uh, for open source software. So we have a set of standards and rules that we work as editors working with open source foundations. And we take these platforms and build them into uh, a supportable platform that we can offer to commercial customers and they can get the support that they need from engineers. And in doing so, we provide, we feed back to the foundations and back to the open source projects on a royalty basis on any subscribed products that come through that and then plug it into our support platforms. If you go to support.axiomedics.com, you'll see our open support platforms. Um, and then uh, we engage the, the actual engineers involved in the software development and whatnot in the support platforms. And they get a share of all the subscription revenues uh, split on a quarterly basis based on the support they provide to the community. It's a way for us to be able to take these platforms, make them commercially usable, commercially viable, and provide back to the community in ways that impact and incentivize people at multiple levels. But the third key part of, of an open source community is, is the world of experts. And one of the key challenges that we've had over the past year is finding those experts, developing relationships with those experts, and working with them. And they're very distributed. They're in many different places. And uh, what we've done is formalize our relationship by developing what we call the Axiomatics Expert Network. So if you go on the back, you'll find a card like this. It has a little QR code on it. Um, 
but we have a, a basically a, a network of experts that we're recruiting uh, to really bring all the capabilities around developing software, implementing software, doing data analysis, delivering solutions uh, into a network where we can recruit those people for on a part-time or full-time basis for short-term projects, long-term projects, et cetera. So it's a, a freelance contractor network that allows us to bring people to bear very quickly with sometimes within days on a project to help solve a problem uh, and develop long-term relationships over time. Uh, on the partner side, there's also a card there for partners. Uh, if you have a need for an expert that's an ITB2 expert, a machine learning expert, a, a data scientist, um, we can reach into our network, find people with the skills and expertise you need, and set you up with them to work right away. But I think as, as Linus Torvald said, in, in open source communities, the more people you have involved, the better it gets. And our goal is to build the network of people involved in ITB2, in Transmart, in open source software, in the biomedical space, build out a network of critical mass, both on the, the side of the experts and on the side of people being able to implement those because they can find the people they need for that implementation and make things work. So just a little bit about the Axiomedics Expert Network. Um, for experts, you have an expertise, a capability that's, that's uh, um, important in this space. We'd like to hear from you. We'll talk with you, work with you, um, and then we have a series of opportunities we can match you up with um, in terms of, of freelance work, 10 hours or less a week, part-time work, 20 hours or so a week, or full-time, uh, and we can match you up. On the partner side, if you need an expert in this space, uh, we have a database of experts. It's building, it's growing. Uh, we have a history of, of who they've worked with, what projects they've worked with, how effective that work has been, and we can match you up with an expert to meet your needs very quickly. Um, I just want to point out one quick uh, use case, which you'll hear about tomorrow. Uh, but we've uh, one of the groups we've been working with in open innovation is the Open Source Pharma Foundation, developing new ways, new open source methods for, for doing drug discovery. There's a poster on a, an implementation of Transmart for neglected diseases in the back. Uh, so feel free to, to talk to the team about that. And from the perspective of just finishing up, um, what we're really trying to do with, with, with Axiomedics is find new ways to make open source an effective approach in science and medicine. We're not developing the next Red Hat Linux here. Um, you know, ITB2 is not gonna be used by tens of millions of end users. So we need models that are gonna work for implementing these kinds of platforms in spaces where they can make a real difference and a real impact. And we think that the Axiomedics Expert Network is one way of making that happen. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Um, I think Hubert um, Essex Management, is he here? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna let, we're gonna get one more real quick. Hubert, I promise there's gonna be much in the back. Sponsors? All right, great. All right, thanks, guys. Oops. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. I don't know why I keep saying. All right, very good. Great, guys. Glad you made it. <laughs> great. Uh, thank you all for uh, for being here today. Thank you, Diane and Rudy. Um, we are Essex Management. We're a small uh, IT and clinical informatics focused consulting firm, and we're standing in the way of your lunch, so we're going to make this brief <laughs> and uh, and get right to the the heart of it. Um, so we've been working for about five years in the I2B2 domain and 10 years overall in health informatics. We have a number of clients that we've been serving, and we're super thrilled to be here first year uh, as a sponsor at the event, but our fourth year overall in attendance. Uh, we offer the full spectrum of I2B2 services. Um, I won't uh, belabor you with, uh, with detailing them here, but some of the more interesting stuff that we do is in relation to custom plugins um, and using I2B2 as a data source for other work. Um, so our project experience is pretty varied in, as far as I2B2 goes. Uh, we've worked on virtual banks. We've worked with the ACT team um, on the, uh, the, sh the Shrine-based uh, Accrual to Clinical Trials Network. And then we've also worked with the National Institutes of Health and National Cancer Institute, um, designing some custom plugins for linking curated data and images. 
Um, and then we've also in-house developed some analytics software that will be helpful to members of the ACT network and then also other institutions that are using Shrine to, to share their I2B2 data. And I'll turn it over to my colleague uh, Hubert now to I'll try to turn it over to talk a little bit more about some of those plugins that we've developed as well as the uh, the application for analytics. Uh, yes, and uh, I'm the reason lunch is late because I was late getting here, got stranded in Nashville. Um, but uh, one of the interesting things that we've done with the National Cancer Institute is working uh, with the Cancer Imaging Archive, TCIA, and using I2B2 as a query tool, bringing in the curated data for these study data sets, along with uh, the data that's available in the TCI itself in terms of image data, tumor volumes, tumor measurements, uh, those sorts of things, bringing that together in one platform and allowing users to uh, query across studies for different things like finding all triple negative breast cancer patients over many different studies who meet particular characteristics. And then once you've got that patient set uh, to do this, uh, to do a, the the plugin that you're looking at is to link to the TCIA, so you can click on the hyperlink, it'll open up that patient in TCIA, or you can click the button and it opens up everyone in the patient set in TCIA for you. And then you're over in TCIA world, you can download the DICOMs, do whatever manipulation that you need to do there. So again, I2B2 as a data source, and the tech behind this, it's, it's this is an R shiny plugin uh, that you're looking at. And another one we did as part of this, is, project was to export the data uh, from I2B2 in the SDTM format, study data tabulation model. Uh, and we, as part of this project, we ran it through the, the, the validator for SDTM. Uh, so we generate uh, both CSV and SAS export files uh, per standards. Uh, and again, this is another uh, R and Shiny uh, plugin. I'm a Python person mostly, but R and Shiny uh, fits the bill for doing some of these sort of dashboarding, importing, export things. So, uh, whoops, next. And then this is what we're working on currently. Um, we just as a community project uh, to put it out there to build a dashboard just for analytics that, that a shrine on I2B site can go uh, install and that you'll have these things and you can go look at it and customize it. And, it, and it's R as well. So, I guess I'm an R person as much as Python now. But um, so we're around, we're at the table in the back for today. Uh, feel free to stop by and chat about this, uh, any of the things that we've talked about. Um, but we're happy to be here, happy, uh, you know, happy to kind of show some of the things that we're working on and especially seeing I2B2 and you know, different sort of domain spaces, not just the clinical, sort of the, the traditional I2B2 clinical research but integrating in other places as a data source and you know as a as a hub to get this data out. So thank you. And, yeah, just uh, love to hear your user stories. So stop by our table and, and feel free to chat and uh, take it from there. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you.